the the mosque was a big part of our lives from mm. a very early age so you know um from the age as soon as I started going to school I remember before school we would go to madrasa in the morning at the mosque and that was like obviously you know it's early you're like oh god I gotta get out of the house earlier than normal it would it was literally like 30 minutes it wasn't even like a long time yeah. but um it was a quite alternative madrasa it's not potentially what you think of as like you know after school madrasas around the UK um we'd arrive at the mosque and we had this um com you know British revert man teaching us um and uh we had we had like different groups actually so that was that was like a big part of my upbringing was going to the madrasa in the morning and that happened all the way until I basically went to um high school mm. I would go there um and you know we'd go in different groups depending on our level and um I've got really good memories from that to be honest and you know we would also like they'd, they'd get us to do different like like you know a bit of PE in the morning to wake us up so we would like actually run around the mosque oh wow it's quite a big mosque and he'd make us like run around it to like wake us up and then like we'd do our two rakah and then um yeah it was quite like I said it was a bit alternative but it was good good fun and if it was someone's birthday like we would like you know play a trick on them or something like that like I don't know it was just it was quite funny um and it was all ages as well um so that that was great great and then we would do like um different plays for the Eid so we'd do like different like stories of the Sahaba or like mm -hmm. um of the Hajj like we did a play about the Hajj and um I don't know I can't really remember exactly what plays we did now but I remember like being parts in the play um they did actually have a school um that a lot of like the community kids went to but I didn't ever go to it um but I remember like being involved in some elements of it so that was also um it was also really nice um and I remember just having like a strong connection to my community to the mosque to my friends um you know I remember like going to like the sort of zikr circles like from about 12 or 13 which yeah. was not as common normally you'd get invited a bit later on mm. so I always had like a very strong connection to I'd say Allah um and you know a desire to want this path like mostly just my mum, like sort of bringing us up on the daily sort of thing. Um, and, you know, she taught me how to pray. When I was about 11, I started praying like two prayers. And then when I started my period, I was like 13 and a half, I'd pray like full time. Um, and, you know, the scarf never was really like a topic in my house. So my mum, you know, wore it, some of my sisters wear it, but like, it was never like, okay, now you have to start wearing hijab. Like it was, that wasn't even mentioned. Um, it was completely something that just came naturally to me at the time that it did. And if I took it off tomorrow, like no one in my close family or friends would say anything to me. Um, Eid was like the best day of the year. Like we would go to the mosque in the morning in our new clothes. We would listen to the, so we'd have a day off school. If it was during the, the week, that was loads of fun. <laughs> we would, you know, we'd see all our friends at the mosque. We'd sit through the prayer really, really quietly because after the prayer, after the chutbah and the prayer of the Eid, um, the kids were then like, and I remember always the Imam reminding everyone like, this day is about the kids. And we were like, yeah, it's about us. <laughs> and so we would literally someone from, cause in our mosque we have like a balcony for the women. It's quite a large balcony. And um, someone would chuck sweets off the top of the balcony and all the kids would be downstairs and we would go mad. It was like the funnest thing ever. If we didn't have that, we'd have a pinata. You know, it was like, where you can like, you know, we'd hang that off the balcony. Um, and then we'd go out for breakfast or get invited to someone's house, like big breakfast, all the hundreds of people, or we'd go have breakfast in the park. Um, so Eid was amazing. And so, like I said, like, I feel like those kind of ways of celebrating Christmas in the terms of like with your non-Muslim family, you know, out of respect and, you know not making them feel like you can't sell you know you can't be with them on that day um personally I feel like it's okay as long as the Eid is like bigger as long as the Eid is like no competition you know make sure that the Eid is really important for kids and presents and you know things like that so Eid was Eid was amazing so what about when you started wearing hijab so were you did you start wearing hijab while you were at school yeah, so I started wearing, like, I normally wear like a turban um, yeah. when I was like 16. So it was quite interesting because I started wearing it when I was 13 um, mm -hmm. outside of school. 
So anytime I go to school, I would just like have my hair up in a bun. I would never like really design, you know, like style it or anything. It was always just very like, um, you know, subtle or whatever, discreet. And um, and actually it's really interesting. And it's something that I reflect on sometimes now, like actually when I would like straighten my hair or like style it at all, like the boys would give me so much like attention, not like, not like horrible or anything, but they would just comment on it or like, and I noticed that. I remember it being like a thing, like, why are they, why are they noticing me today? Or like, why are they mentioning something about my hair? Like just, you know, you never like normally compliment it. So why just, I don't know. It was like something that I, I felt a bit uncomfortable with. So I would, wouldn't style it very often at all really. And subhanAllah just came to me. So I got given some GHD straighteners when I was maybe like 14 or something. Within the year they were broken oh wow these straighteners are like meant to be like the best quality they're really expensive they've got a two-year guarantee blah blah, yeah. blah. I can just thought about that now weird Allah, Allah. um yeah so basically my hair was always like in a bun and actually it was really awkward because I'd wear my scarf everywhere else except from school um out of my own choice I just say that alhamdulillah um <laughs> Uh, when I'd bump into people in the street, like from the mosque or like my friend's brothers who are Muslim, like I'd feel really uncomfortable, but I don't know why, like, you know, I'd be like, because they normally see me with my hair covered and then suddenly they're not, you know, it was yeah, like yeah. contrast. Um, and then when I was 16, I was like, oh dear, like you want to wear it, like what is going on? Like, you know, you feel more comfortable, like just wear it. So I thought, okay, cool. What I'll do is I'll move schools to go to sixth form at a different school. And then I can like start afresh and then like no one knows me there so they'll only know me like with that so I even went to the interview and I went to like the open day at the other school and um and in the end I stayed at my own school I was like why am I doing this to myself I'm gonna start all over again all the effort of making new friends where I've got friends at my school they've seen me in my scarf they'll accept me they'll actually support me and I'm so glad I did and you know I never really had like a huge um school life in the sense that when I was 16 at sixth form you don't have like full-on days you have like some classes each day mm -hmm. so and I lived fairly close to the school so most of my social life wasn't with my school friends by that time um not like it was you know before then so yeah it was fine I'm really glad that I stayed and everyone seemed really accepting Mashallah. that's amazing what incredible memories I uh, you know, like I said at the beginning, you're the first person I've met who both of the parents are converts. And that's absolutely amazing. And I'm so glad we had this chat because it's good to find out, you know, uh, it's amazing. Alhamdulillah, you've got to have that childhood with Islam and everything. And I think a lot of converts would be very curious, like me, when you told me that your parents are converts, I was like, oh, I have to know everything. Tell me, tell me. Well, thank you very much for coming on my channel. And um, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, till next time. <laughs>